Hi kids, your history teacher Mr. Schlockens here, and today we talk about the elephant in the room, the big tamale, North Korea. 1991 saw the end of the Cold War with the fall of the Soviet Union, but there were still communist countries. But heretofore, nobody's cared. Well, China's the only formidable one, but we can forgive them because they send us cheap shit. Now the North Koreans have nukes and they're threatening us. In 2014, they had a tantrum over a movie. In 2016, their foreign minister said, Stop your South Korean war games and we'll stop threatening you with nuclear war. Now we have a standoff in the China Sea. It's all our fault. Well, I say our in the abstract. I mean, it's America's fault. If it's good, it's from the Lord. If it's bad, it's your own darn fault. Suck it up, flag wavers. The day after the atomic bomb fell on Nagasaki, the Japanese abandoned Korea. The American and Soviet armies moved in to show the Koreans how to run a modern state. After all, they were just dumb yellow people. The victors drew an arbitrary line at the 38th parallel. No Korean was consulted on the division of their ancient land. The Soviets would administer the new country of North Korea. Americans were shocked when the communist Russians taught North Korea communism. Meanwhile, in the South, Koreans were shocked when their former Japanese overlords were brought in to help administer the provisional government. The Marshall Plan was a program to rebuild the shattered economy of Europe. The Asian counterpart was National Security Council Document 48-2, or the Policy for Asia. Under this plan, Japan would be the industrial center of Asia, powered by U.S. companies. Korea and Vietnam would be loyal satellite states. They would be responsible for raw materials and consumers. North Koreans saw this as a continuation of Japanese dominance in Asia. On June 25, 1950, North Korean armies crossed the 38th parallel. To the North Koreans, this was just a continuation of the fight against Japanese imperialism. They just wanted to drive the Japs out and reunite their country. Kim Il-sung got his start in the 1930s, fighting the Japanese. He was first and foremost anti-Japanese. The Chinese had had their fill of foreign invaders and they didn't want Americans so close to their border. So China helped North Korea. Americans were told it was a communist invasion. Gooks can't act independently. Surely they were taking orders from Stalin. The evil Secretary of State Dean Ackeson persuaded President Truman to send in the military without a declaration of war. The Constitution calls for a navy, but not an army. At the end of World War II, President Truman followed tradition and drastically scaled down the army. But the war had stirred up the economy. Ackeson drafted National Security Council Document 68. It called for a large standing army to be sent around the world to help our allies contain communism. President Eisenhower would call it the military-industrial complex. Truman signed it, but until Korea, it was just a pipe dream of one of the president's wise men. The war is what got the economies of Japan and West Germany hopping. U.S. industry made out all right as well. Ackeson told students at Yale, the Korean War saved us. At the end of World War II, the American military was used to help the Europeans hold on to their colonies, including French Indochina. American ships brought tons of equipment, 
and troops to train the French. This would be a gold mine for the military industrial complex. And how did the Korean War end? The armies fought to a stalemate, and that line drawn in the sand still serves as the border. General MacArthur wanted to go in with guns blazing, but his hands were tied with complex rules of engagement. When he bitched about it, Truman fired him for insubordination. When it was too late, Congress held hearings, and MacArthur's successors proved him right. Said General Mark Clark, I was not allowed to bomb the numerous bridges across the Yalu River, over which the enemy constantly poured his trucks and his munitions and his killers. General James Van Fleet. My own conviction is that there must have been information to the enemy that we would not attack his home bases across the Yalu. Air Force Commander, General George Stratemeyer. You get in war to win it. You do not get in war to stand still and lose it. And we were required to lose it. We were not permitted to win. We may or may not have had the right to interfere with Korea's civil war. But then again, this brutal regime was allowed to survive. Now it's threatening us with nukes.